The 15 Point Plan is part of the Winmate Give Podcast Network. Welcome to the 15 Point Plan Podcast. Chad Himes here with the positive Jolene Snell. Hi, Jolene. Chad. How are you today? Doing so good. I'm excited for our topic. I am excited for our topic as well today, Jolene. What is that topic as we go deeper and deeper into goals? We are talking about affirmations mm. versus ask formations. Ooh. We sort sort of made up our word for that one. So yes. just stay tuned on what that means. Okay. Now I'm gonna just put it out here, Jolene. I'm not a big fan of affirmations. Just not my thing. You know, I wanted to challenge you on that. And then as I got into the research, I saw where you were going with this and I thought, this is good. And okay. then I started practicing it this week as well. Okay. But that's not just affirmations. I'm not a big fan, but Jolene, let's just start there because you made a great point earlier when we were talking about this. You said, look, Chad, someone who doesn't exercise at all, even if they went walking, that's probably a move in the right direction. So someone who's not doing anything for their proper mindset, focus, and moving in the right directions, maybe affirmations are the place to start. Although hopefully by the end of this 15-minute episode, we've changed their mind. Maybe. Yeah. It, it's a way to level up and make what we're already doing even more powerful. Okay. And so with, with affirmations, tell us a little bit more about what they're designed to do and a little bit of the theory behind it. All right. Well, positive affirmations are positive phrases or statements that are used to challenge negative and unhelpful thoughts in our head. Ever have a negative or unhelpful thought? Not very often. No, of course not. Why would we, right? Yet almost everybody has challenging, negative, or unhelpful thoughts. And positive affirmations are things we say to ourselves, right? It is a carefully formatted statement that should be repeated to yourself and written down frequently. For affirmations to be effective, they should be in present tense, positive, personal, and specific, and we'll come back to breaking all that down. Sounds good. And I wanted to actually share a statistic. Um, research has told us that as much as 77% of everything we think is negative. And of course, that's a big motivation for, for creating affirmations. And another interesting statistic that I found is as much as 75% of all illnesses are self-induced. Mm. But it all leads back to this programming that we have given our minds. So. Yeah, and over on Win, Make, Give, we've talked about this. Our friend Clint Swindoll has talked about this on mm -hmm. his podcast. Not only are so many of our thoughts negative, a huge percentage of those thoughts are the same ones we had yesterday. And they're the same ones we had the day before. So they keep repeating again and again and again. And this is where affirmations really come into play. So, Jolene, I decided to do some research for everybody. So, Claude Steele sounds like a great, you know, James Bond character, right? <laughs> sure Claude Steele, right? Originally popularized the self-affirmation theory in the late 1980s. Were you around in the late 1980s? Uh, yeah. Just barely. Okay, very, just very barely. Young. I'm just making sure, all right? So the self-affirmation theory is a psychological theory that focuses on how individuals adapt to information and experiences that are threatening to their self-concept. Okay. I just thought it was just really cool to find that there was this stuff behind this, right? Experimental investigations of self-affirmation theory suggest that self-affirmation will help individuals cope with threat, stress, and it might be beneficial to improving their academic performance, their health, and reducing defensiveness in their lives. I found that really interesting, reducing defensiveness. Yeah, and that's where a lot of it really comes back to. The whole thing that we want you, audience, to understand about the self-affirmation theory is that you will do everything you can to protect your self-integrity. That's what it all comes down to. And the self-affirmation theory proposes that you will always be driven to protect that self-integrity. That's one's concept of oneself as a good, moral person who acts in ways that are in accordance with cultural and social norms. Jolene, that means we all see ourselves as good. Is that possible? Like, we can't all be good. Uh, yeah, I guess it depends on the affirmations that we're using, right? Mm -hmm. How do we view ourselves? Okay. And so, what are we defaulting to subconsciously? There you go, right? From our own perspective, that self-integrity is saying, 
we believe we're good. We believe we're doing right. Mm -hmm. We believe we are moral. No one thinks they're evil. Yet isn't it interesting when we look at the world, how many people we disagree with or how many people believe something we don't believe, we immediately say we're right, they're wrong. Absolutely. Right? It's protecting yeah. our self-integrity and saying, no, 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 no. This is the right stance on that mm -hmm. position, whatever it is, because that's the self-affirmation theory that we're always going to protect our own image of ourself as being right. Okay. So it can take the form of being independent, intelligent, a helpful member of society, part of a family, part of a group. And threats against it are events or messages that will teach us that we have to protect. Okay? We have to protect who we are. And there's always threats every single day. And that's some of these things we were talking about at the beginning. We're always going to see threats to our self-image, which is where affirmations can come into play. Now, the subconscious mind. We all have one. We wish we could control it better. Talk to me a little bit about the subconscious, Jolene, because I know you went and grabbed some information on that, which helps us with this affirmation concept. Sure. Well, the interesting thing about the subconscious mind, Chad, is that it can't differentiate between negative and positive hmm. or, what's, or between what's real and imagined. Okay, so and that virtual reality stuff could be dangerous because our subconscious is believing it's all real. Well, absolutely. I mean, even my son will watch a little YouTube video or something of Batman, and then all of a sudden he runs around the house thinking he's Batman, right? Like, he's he's living that out, thinking this is real for him. It, it is. Now, that's that is dangerous. All, that's normal for every <laughs> young boy, Jolene. Sure is. That's just a light example of it, right? <laughs> um, so, for example, if we want to be successful, we don't want to say things like, I don't want to be a failure. Mm. The subconscious mind will act upon the word failure and ignores the word don't and actualizing the undesired result. Interesting. Right? So we want to look at what we're saying to ourselves because once the subconscious mind accepts an idea, it literally begins to execute on it that very moment. Mm. Right? Yeah. One of the things I love about working with you and, and having known you for a decade plus now, Jolene, uh, you're very, you're very good with your words. You, you sit there and you'll, you'll describe things. Well, you'll, you'll say things in just the right way to make sure you're bringing the right response you're looking for. You've learned how to phrase things. So give us some examples of, of what might some affirmations be for people out there who are like, I don't even know where to start on creating an affirmation. What, what might a good affirmation sound like? So a couple of these are ones that I've used in the past, but ones I took from people that I highly respect and admire. Okay. And what this is about is choosing what we want to share, choosing carefully what we want to share with our subconscious mind. And uh, that could look like, I am a healthy person. Mm -hmm. so that's a pretty common one, right? Yep. I like that one because it makes you feel like that's a part of your identity. If you've ever re read that book, Atomic Habits, they talk ab about what you say to yourself being a part of your identity mm. and, and really embracing that and how that can create change. Okay. A few others would be, I am in control of my life. Mm. My confidence increases every day. I am confident in who I am. I love this one. Problems do not derail me. They reveal my strength. Oh, that sounds good. Say that one again. Problems do not derail me. They reveal my strength. Okay. And notice that these are statements, right? Yes, they are. I am worthy of achieving the goals I have set for myself. Okay. Now let's improve these uh, a little bit, right? Let's take them to the next level. So Jolene, give me something I can do to take an affirmation. I'm putting air quotes around that here. Uh, an affirmation and to improve it. You just mentioned these were statements. What else should we make sure these statements include to make them as powerful as possible? You can include your own name. Okay. Right? Uh, so put your name in the affirmation. Phrase the goal in present tense to bring it to reality. Um, add a feeling to strengthen the affirmation. What like do you mean by I that? feel, mm. I enjoy, I am, those okay. types of phrases. Add a reward to reinforce what we're working towards. Okay. I'm thinking already of like the meal that I'm going to have when I reach the finish line of Ragnar. Got it. Okay. Right? Maybe it's cake, actually. I just I want some sugar. I look forward to hearing what that is because we'll probably <laughs> be eating it too. 
be sure to balance the goal and reward so that they're realistic, achievable, and meaningful. So that's how to strengthen the affirmations that we currently have. You know, you say that last one there, the be sure to balance the goal so that they're realistic, achievable, meaningful. Boy, that's just bringing up smart to me. So folks, go back and listen to the episode just two episodes ago where we took SMART goals and broke down what that really stands for, making sure your affirmations are that way. Okay, Jolene, now here's here's my platform. Here's my position. I think as soon as we say an affirmation, our brain says baloney, right? And I'm just saying the nice word there because I don't want Dave to have to bleep us out and any children that are listening, right? I think our brain says, no, you're not. You're not a healthy person. You're not confident. You're not getting any better than you were yesterday. And we immediately fall right back into that pattern of negative thoughts, okay? I believe instead of affirmations, we should be using ask formations. Okay. Now, Jolene, we made up this word. We did. Break it down for everybody of what an ask formation is. So what we're going to do is take an affirmation, something that we've written that are, are statement-based, right? The ones that our brain might argue with us over, okay. um, like I am healthy, and we're going to change it to uh, a question, okay. a carefully formatted question. Yes. Right? All right. Because the brain is wired to give us better outcomes when we ask better questions. So, Jolene, let me ask, have you ever ever watched a movie or a TV show? Uh, not very much these days, but yes, of course. <laughs> Especially not that's animated, right? We'll watch a movie or a TV show, and this is an example everybody can get out there, and you sit there and you go, who is that person, right? I recognize that guy or that girl from, um, 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 um. Yeah, the answer, it's, it's hard to come to you in that moment sometimes. Correct, right? and... Me, I just reach for my phone and I go to the IMDB app and I punch it in and I find my answer because I'm too impatient. Yet here's the thing. If you just relaxed, your brain will find the answer to that question. It might be an hour later. It might be 10 minutes later. It might be two or three hours later. But our brain is working to find answers all day long to questions that we ask it. So we want to make sure that we are bringing powerful questions instead of just what I consider lies that we're telling ourselves as affirmations. Well, and doesn't it take a significant amount of willpower to implement something like affirmations because we're like essentially forcing ourselves to say something that we don't believe quite yet? Correct. Yeah. That's a great point, Jolene. So let's talk about this questioning thing, right? We found some things about how powerful questions are. The first thing you found was? That questions create change. Mm. So they, they create transformation, they inspire innovation, and they result in true change because what it's doing is tying to our intrinsic motivation. So we're like, we're, by asking the question, we're more likely to build our own motivation. There's actually a study done on this exact topic of statements versus questions. And in that study, um, the, the participants not only did better as a result of the question, but it it automatically increased their intrinsic motivation. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, we know that questions will increase commitment when you engage your brain, right? When our brain gets involved, and it's not just some statement we've said, but we've asked a question, we get more engaged, which means we have a stronger commitment to finding that answer. Jolene, what was the other thing you found? That questions help focus thinking. So when we get focused on thinking, we can create breakthrough answers. Oh, and those are powerful answers to have, right? And then the last thing we had found in there was that questions will increase your success when you ask the right question. Questions open the mind to what's possible, but answers actually close the mind. I love that. Say that again. Right, right. Questions open the mind to what's possible, while answers close the mind. So, Jolene... Let's take some affirmations and turn them into ask formations. Give me an example of one as an affirmation and then make it better. All right. So the first one I actually found in my research, and that is the affirmation of it is safe to be me. But you just talked about that at the beginning of this podcast, yep. how our subconscious is looking for that safety, Correct. right? And um, th- that's an affirmation that we can change to why is it safe to be me? Hmm. So I thought that was interesting. It's a good one to write down. Okay. And then a common one is, Chad, I will exercise today. Sure. How many times do we say that and then don't go to the uh, gym or do anything, right? Yeah. So let's turn that to an ask formation, Jolene. 
uh, am I going to exercise today? Yeah. Who am I going to exercise with today? Mm -hmm. Where am I going to exercise? When will I exercise today? What will my exercise look like today? We can take any of these and turn them into powerful questions that's going to make our brain go find that answer, which will actually lead us where we hoped an affirmation would take us, which it probably didn't. So, Jalene, give me some of your personal affirmations turned into ask formations as we wrap this one up. Yeah, so I've got four that I use on a daily basis or have used in the past that I've now re reframed. So I'll share them as statements first. Um, I will walk with grace today. I will live by my impeccable word. I will guide my emotions in every moment, and I will be a role model for others. That's okay. my, my personal mantra, if, sure. if you will, right? Absolutely. Now and let's so, make these some good questions. Uh, yes, Power Chad. Them up. Uh, how will I walk with grace today? Mm. In what ways will I live by my impeccable word? Will I guide my emotions in every moment? And what examples could I create to be a role model for others today? Yeah, and it's amazing because you could take that same one right there. What examples? You could change it and just say, who will I be a role model to today? Right? What action will I do? We can change the question just slightly and it'll give us a completely different answer and keep moving us down the path that we want to live by. Absolutely. And our decisions that day are really no better than the questions that we ask ourselves at the start of the day. Oh, say that again. Our decisions are, are really no better than the questions we ask ourselves. Love that. Love it up. Close this one up for us over there, Miss Positive Jolene Snell. I'm into that title, actually. To perform a daily affirmations without like that tedious feeling of being forced into a new belief that we're, we're just not there yet, right? Um, will we want to do something like affirmations from now on? Chad, will we? I, I won't. <laughs> Ever. But even though you said you, you answered my question, right? Mm -hmm. So you had this automatic default that when the question was asked, you answered. Correct. And so that's common for humans in general, whether it's an internal dialogue or an external dialogue. And so I think that we just want to look at what we're doing already, most likely, mm -hmm. with affirmations, and then reframe them into these powerful questions. See, if you asked me if I was going to start doing ask formations every day, I would have said absolutely 100%. Folks, we want every one of you out there, if you've been doing affirmations, go write them down. Take a minute. Turn them into powerful, empowering questions. Start asking yourself those every day. If you haven't, start with an affirmation or skip that stage and just go right to the power question that you could be asking yourself every day and let your brain find the answer, which will help you achieve the goals you have set. On behalf of Jolene, we hope this episode ups your energy and takes you to the next level.